Hi, and welcome back to OTH Inside, your source for One Tree Hill information direct from Wilmington, North Carolina. Jeff's on vacation this week, so I'm going to try to recall what happened last night on One Tree Hill. Uh, first of all, the team had to wrestle with emotions uh, as they hit the court for the first time after Quentin's untimely death. Um, the only thing that kept them going was an inspirational speech by Nathan and uh, Quentin's mother, who we got to meet. So for a little while, it looked like the game between Skills and Dub was going to come to an end, too. But at the last minute, Nathan up and decided that if it makes his mom happy, then he's happy. And so go ahead and do it. Just don't let him see it. Uh, the show was all about moms last night. As a matter of fact, Brooke suspected her mother was behind the big attack in front of her store. And so she traveled all the way to New York City to confront her. Um, when she got there... The mother just vented everything that had happened in her life. Basically, everything was Brooke's fault for being born and being born a girl and her, you know, caused her husband to leave and she couldn't start the business that she'd always wanted. So after hearing that, Brooke threw up all her hands and said, you know what, if that was your dream, go ahead, take the business. I don't want it. And I don't ever want to see you again either. So <laughs> that took care of that. But I'm curious to see if she's actually going to stick to that plan. Um, as for the weird Nanny Carey storyline, uh, Nanny Carey broke into little Jamie's house and stole his clothes and his bunny. Now that's an all-time low for any TV series that, that I'm familiar with. Uh, so we're going to see if Nanny Carey, well, I know she's going to get hers, but we'll see when she's going to get hers. Uh, it shouldn't be too long. And by the way, people are now just beginning to wonder what happened to Dan. So we'll maybe find that out next week too. One of the great things about reporting on One Tree Hill and the city where it's filmed is that we get to show you guys some really great behind the scenes stuff. This week we talked with Damon Nelson, a tour guide with Hollywood Location Walk of Old Wilmington. Uh, Wilmington has a great, rich and long film history that dates back to the 1980s when director Dino De Laurentiis opened a studio here to film Firestarter. Since then it's exploded. We've had more than 300 major television and films uh, shot here at what is now EUE Screen Gems including One Tree Hill. Um, from what we understand and what uh, Damon told us, a lot of people go through, it goes through a cycle. A lot of people these days want to know what's up with One Tree Hill. And a couple of years ago, they want to know what's up with Dawson's Creek. Uh, so we asked him to tell us what are the three biggest places that he gets the most oohs and ahs from, from the One Tree Hill fans. Uh, he went into character as a guy named Marty Bergman, and this is what he had to say. All right, folks, welcome. I'm, of course, you probably don't recognize me with the glasses on. It's Marty Bergman. Yeah, Hollywood Location Walk. Yeah, they snagged me. I still owe them a few more community service hours, so they snagged me. For two-hour segments, you can walk my tour and see your favorite local One Tree Hill and Dawson Creek locations, as well as the number of 300, over 300, movies and TV series. But let me point out one specific location right here for you One Tree Hill fans. You see right here at this water fountain, this is where Sophie Bush and Hillary Burton, in the very first season, Sophie Bush twists her ankle at a fraternity. And you see in this, uh, this courthouse dressed up to look like a frat house with frat fraternity banners against these windows right here. Here, of course, is exciting entrance to Karen's Cafe. During the first four seasons of One Tree Hill, it played a very important part. But as you can see, folks, if you pan over just a little bit, here we got Close Over Bros. What is this? C over B? Close Over Bros? You can see, I love this location because of the naked silver ladies all throughout the windows. This is a very important spot here, folks, for a lot of One Tree Hill history. Because uh, right here on this very corner, in fact, is where uh, Haley gets hit by a car in the fourth season of One Tree Hill. Uh, Dante, who's uh, quite upset with Nathan, uh, tries to hit Nathan, but Hillary puts him, puts him, pushes him out of the way. Chad Michael Murray, who runs out of the store, has a weak heart when he gets excited to see his friend laying on the sidewalk, has a little heart attack. We think he's dead. And when he wakes up, of course, after the commercial break, and walks down this street, he sees moving a block and a half down. Who was it but Keith Scott? Keith Scott, who died a season and a half before. In fact, you'll recognize the roof up here in the fifth season of One Tree Hill. That's where, uh, uh, 
<laughs> That's for Peyton and Haley. They throw water balloons. They land blast uh, Dan Scott from that rooftop there. Right here underneath uh, Karen's Cafe, Close Over Bros, and that parking meter right across the way there. Now, some of you Wilmington natives may recognize the real cafe behind me, but you One Tree Hill diehards, you probably know it as a different name. Yes, that's Carl's Crab Shack. And Sophie Bush got a job there at Carl's Crab Shack as a waitress. But she didn't quite gel with Uncle Carl himself. So he punished her by making her walk around this very block, this very block right here, wearing a crab, a lobster costume. And with a sandwich board draped across her costume that said two crabs, two crabs for the price of one. That's it for the day, folks. I hope you enjoyed the webcast. Jeff will be back next week. And don't forget to send us your ideas, comments, and suggestions to starnewsothinside at gmail.com. Thanks.